tips, tips, tips with Tony. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. All about nutrition from your favorite dietitian. Everything you need to digest in your mind. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. Making you healthier one bite at a time. With Tony. With Tony. With Tony. Welcome to the Tips with Tony podcast. I'm Tony Marinucci, your registered dietitian, helping you get healthy one bite at a time. This time of year, I'm recording this around December. It's about to be the new year. Um, I'm, this will, might go out around the new year. I haven't decided yet. But anyways, this is a time of year where a lot of people are considering going into 2020 or the new year, taking their health very seriously. They have New Year's resolutions. I'm not knocking them. I think it's actually a beautiful thing to have a reason to kind of start over, although you have that opportunity every day and every moment. But if it gives you that umph and motivation to do so, then great. I just want to be sure that you consider all different options before going forward um, and have a clear understanding of like what it is you're getting yourself into. So... I am going to also record an episode about things to consider before going vegan um, because I think what happens is, you know, we're, we eat a certain way, um, we're not happy with the way that we look or the way that we feel, and we want to make a change, and then we go to extremes. Some of you vegan might not be extreme, and some of you keto might not be extreme, but it's really hard to argue otherwise. Um, and I'm going to explain why. So I am not the dietitian that's going to tell you never do this and never do that. I am a dietitian that will weigh out the pros and the cons, let you know what you need to consider, and then allow you to make that educated guess going forward. And here's the cool thing about life <laughs> and making nutrition part of your journey. If you quote, quote unquote, make the wrong choice, you could always change it and fix it. The trick, though, is not to continue to try it repeatedly over and over again, hoping it's going to work differently this time because you think that you failed. It's that that diet most likely didn't fit your lifestyle and the diet failed you and stopped trying to make it fit. Okay, (laughs) So there are a thousand and one ways to be healthy and a thousand and one ways to lose weight. And there are... There's not one right or wrong way. You have to find the way that works best for you, something that you can stick to long term. Um, I try to get people away from putting themselves in a category like I do keto, I do vegan, I do um, paleo, I, I do this, I do that. I don't believe in that. I think that there might be strong components to some of those that you mimic more often. But reality is that if your name is... Tori, let's say, you need to create Tori's diet. You need to create something that works for you. And there's no other Tori out there with your body type, with your energy levels, um, with your work-life balance, with your likes and dislikes, with your cultural background, you know, your living situation. There's just so many factors that come into play. And it's not all about genetics. It's about your environment. And I think it's really, really important to know that going forward. So I feel like I went off on a tangent a little bit. But anyways, I know I had Caitlin Duncan on here and she talked about the keto diet. She really helped break it down and explain what it was, who it's for. If you didn't listen to that episode, I encourage you to go back and listen to it. So, But just briefly to let you guys know, the ketogenic diet is actually a medically prescribed diet for those with epilepsy. Um, And when you look into the research and the studies, it's really strong with being able to help help children um, and those who even as they're older if they experience epilepsy um, to reduce their seizures without having to take tons of medication. Now what they don't tell you is that while they're on these extreme extreme low carb diets so the idea with keto is to go super super low carb so that your body starts to use um, fat as fuel because carb is the main fuel source and it starts to produce ketones and now that becomes your fuel source. Um, what they're not telling you is that those kids, number one, it's really sad because if you think about even a child with a peanut allergy, you know, everybody looks at them differently. Everybody treats them differently. Everybody knows that that's the kid with the peanut allergy. So now this child can't have birth, like cake at birthday parties and just your everyday, even things like fruit because it's high in carbohydrates. So it is very, very challenging socializing as a child who has to be following on a ketogenic diet. 
And then also knowing that they're taking a ton of medication for their heart to protect their heart because with a very low carb diet, there's not enough dietary fiber to prevent things like high cholesterol going um, down the line. So, and they're very closely monitored. Their labs are monitored. Their electrolytes are monitored. They're usually prescribed a uh, laxative to help them move their bowels because there's lack of fiber in the diet. So it's not pretty. It's not, it's not pretty. And I think it, unfortunately, um, diet culture has glorified it as this amazing solution to everyone who's ever trying to lose weight when really it's something that we need to consider as a medical intervention. Um, and it's really ups- upsetting to see. It's very similar with the uh, gluten-free diet. So people with celiac disease are actually allergic or those with a high gluten sensitivity, um, but more particularly those with celiac disease, it's a very serious disease and they literally cannot eat gluten and it can't be, you know, they can't share plates and utensils with people who've cooked with things that have gluten on it and it gets cross-contamination. And it's a very, very serious disease and they don't want to have it. But now we live in a society where gluten-free has become this, like, has this health halo on it when reality is removing gluten from the diet doesn't make the product healthier. It just allows you to tolerate it better. (laughs) So it's not making it healthier. In fact, lots of processed gluten-free foods are just equally as processed as non-gluten-free processed foods. So that is why I think it's really important for you to recognize where these diets are coming from and if, in fact, it is for you. Now, I will say, if you go very low carb doing keto or you go gluten free and you feel better, you might want to get tested to find out if you have celiac disease because that could be something that is the reason why you're feeling so much better. Um, but so that I think I had Alicia Brown on when we talked about like gluten and food allergies and sensitivities. Um, I think I want to do another episode about that personally, because I I am someone who has a very high gluten sensitivity. I mean, that's a whole other topic. It's like you don't have a diagnosis, but you know you feel better without it. So what do you do? So, (laughs) um, So lots of good stuff. Like you guys, you guys know, I like to keep these short and sweet. So I'm trying not to go off on too many tangents, but bringing it back to keto. Um, so those who have epilepsy, it's obviously you don't really have a choice. I mean, you do, you can take other medication, but I mean, having seizures is very serious and very, very, very scary. Um, so you want to obviously reduce the risk of having any of those episodes. So being able to modify your diet without having to take medication or minimizing the amount of medication you would have to take, I think is a great thing. Now there is more research coming out about the benefits of keto with people who are diagnosed with PCOS, even any sort of form, excuse me, of like brain cancer, um, and then obviously temporary weight loss. So I'm not saying that the research isn't there, but what I am saying is it's relatively new and we do not know the long-term side effects. Now, the thing with going back to like PCOS, PCOS has enough studies to support a lower carb diet, but it doesn't, you don't need to go all the way to the point of ketosis, which basically means that your carbohydrate intake is anywhere from like 5% or less of your total calories or under 50 grams. Um, And so that's very, very, very low. And it's almost impossible to get your adequate amount of fiber and all the other nutrients that your body needs to support your health um, when doing that. So I think that it's important to know that um, how it's studied in a lab and then how it's applied in real life is very different. And a lot of people hear keto is great. And so they go very high, high fat, low, low carb. They're not really following anything. They're not really counting their calories. They're, they're maybe counting their carbs, but they're not really doing much of that. So realistically, what ends up happening in the real world when they when people apply it, if they're not doing it under the care of a medical professional or a nutrition professional, they're doing what's called like a modified keto. So they're really just monitoring their carbohydrates. Chances are the, the positive side to keto, which I'm going to get to, I feel like I'm putting it down, which to be honest, I'm, I'm, I try to stay non-biased, but it's not something I see as long term. Um, however, in the beginning stages, it's actually really great because in the beginning it has you remove any added sugar or simple carbohydrates or carbs in general. But obviously when we do that, we're removing added sugar and simple carbs. So we know I've talked about it a thousand times over and over again, a little bit of sugar in your day is totally fine. But if we're exceeding our amounts, then it's going to lead to multiple complications like weight gain, diabetes, 
Um, our energy levels are going to be off. Our hormones are going to be off. So there's so many reasons why we don't want to have too much added sugar in the diet. And so with keto, it's forbidden. So some people do well knowing it's like yes or no. And if you compare it to the alternative, it's going no added sugar, no simple carbohydrates compared to what they were having. Maybe they had lots of soda or they looked in their, you know, their coffee drinks and they had a lot of sugar in them. Um, they maybe usually had ice cream for dessert, whatever it was. They now can't have those. And so the question becomes, is it the keto that's benefiting them or is it that they're actually limiting their added sugar, which is recommended in a majority of diets, and also that they're probably taking in less calories. So that's another big misconception. The way this person is losing weight is not because they're eating high fat and low carb. It's because they are so restricted in what they're able to consume that most people are often taking in less calories. They're in a caloric deficit. And because their diet's high in fat, they tend to feel more satiated and more full. Now, there's a whole other thing you guys know. You, you listen to my episode of DNA um, and nutrigenomics and the future of that. And that's clear. That study is that science is not clear either. However, I do believe down the line, we're going to be able to tell that some people do better on high fat diets. Some people do better on high protein diets and some people do better on um, high carbohydrate diets. Everybody responds to these differently. And it's important that... If you recognize that, if you find that when you eat a higher fat diet, that you actually are able to stay fuller for longer, you're going to be able to, you know, control your, your hunger cues are more controlled, um, and you're be able you're able to stay more consistent, then that's something to pay attention to. But we don't need to do the extreme. So I just kind of want to kind of warn you that. So... So the positive size to it is, I will say, is that it's usually better than the alternative. So whatever you were doing before, maybe you weren't eating vegetables before, and now you learn that non-starchy vegetables are something that you can have a lot of um, because they're very low in carbohydrates, and maybe now you start to incorporate those. Um, You know, maybe you weren't someone who ate enough protein, and now you're starting to add a little bit of protein in your diet. Maybe you didn't eat any healthy fats before, and now you kind of go and you're incorporating more things like olive oil and like avocado um, and nuts and seeds, and that's great. However, the con to the keto diet is that you can't do too many plant-based um, healthy oils because they come from a plant and things like avocado and nuts and seeds, they also have carbohydrates. And so depending on your portion, you might be limited to the amount that you're able to consume. Okay. So that's kind of what I, I just, all I wanted to talk about there. Now the cons to it is we know with that all or nothing you can, and you can't have this it now becomes there's like a ton of food guilt if you kind of go off of it and you have, say, a piece of fruit. Like, it's people are starting to feel guilty for eating fruit. Fruit is very good for us. And, <clears throat> excuse me, there's no reason why we need to exclude it. However, within the keto diet, that is the rules. So now you start to feel guilty for eating healthy food. Like, that's that's where we it becomes a little bit of a challenge. Um, also, it's typically very misinterpreted by the public. And so now we have people having bulletproof coffee. So they basically take tons of coconut oil, put it in their coffee in the morning. They're having 400 calories worth of fat in the morning and not eating breakfast. So they're not eating nutrient-dense foods. Um, and I hate to break it to you guys. And I, it's funny because I'm right now started the Healthy Living Foundation course and teaching them about, you know, all the different macronutrients, carbs, protein, and fat. And the truth about coconut oil, coconut oil is, is that it's not as great as it's perceived to be. Like, we don't know. The studies are not there. The research is not there. It is still firm at room temperature. Therefore, it is a saturated fat. And although you have people arguing that saturated fat doesn't raise cholesterol in the diet, it's actually pretty clear with people who go to keto that end up having high cholesterol that it probably is. So that's where we get a little bit... um, you know, if you want to have coconut oil and you want to have it sparingly, just like any of your oils, they should be used sparingly, um, then that's fine. It's probably better in baking, but we would want to make sure that you're not missing out on the oils that are have a lot of unsaturated fat, which are, are strongly supported by research to show that are heart healthy. Um, things like avocado oil, olive oil, hemp seed oil, flaxseed oil, stuff like that. Okay, so what ends up happening by the public is it's very misinterpreted. So they're having things like bulletproof coffee. They're they're not eating breakfast. Um, They're not eating nutrient-dense foods. They lack fiber. But they're also doing things like bacon and cheeseburgers without the bun. Um, 
And we know processed meats in high quantities are not going to be the best thing for you. So it's just interesting to see like how opposite these diets can be. Um, And like I said earlier, I'm going to do something about the vegan diet. And it's just not that And the vegan diet is more of a lifestyle. I will say that Um, there are some nutrients that are missing from there. Um, But it's just so crazy to see that you can have people on two complete opposite sides of the spectrum that are so excited and so gung-ho about these diets but when we really look down to them they're missing a lot and they're very they are restrictive in the sense they're limited in what they can consume um so the other thing with the keto diet is it's very high fat it's moderate protein um i don't think that it, you're really getting enough uh, to be honest um so i think it's it's not enough proteins obviously not enough carbohydrates um and can we just talk about like how socialization is going to be impacted like not being able to you know go to social events if you can be it you're confident within you're not super awkward about it fine but not being able to have so many options that are going to be served at that party um so if you're going to stay home and you know you know be home most of the time you don't socialize much then it might be fine um but there comes there's a lot to be said about socialization and overall general health and wellness and how important it is um to do um and i i would just say the the last con to it is it just confuses the public and you know i'm someone who believes strongly in helping people get healthy one bite at a time and really being able to you know look and incorporate all foods and learning about you know the pros and cons to all macronutrients and um one thing our our diet culture tends to do is it tends to pick one and glorify it or pick one and like demonize it and food is beautiful food is amazing food fuels our body and so there's not one that's better than the other there's just you know some will recognize you'll recognize you you uh, feel better when you eat some of them you're able to keep your weight down when you eat um, more of others like for example like lots of vegetables lots of water lean proteins I mean there's some pretty basic things that I think fundamentally if we all were to incorporate more we could move away from these extremes and finally commit to something and stick to it and yeah the scale is not going to drop crazy one thing I didn't say but I have mentioned this on a thousand podcasts before It's like when any low carb diet, the first five, six pounds you lose is mostly water weight. So if you go about it in a healthier way and you learn how to modify those added sugars and those simple carbs without removing them completely, then, yeah, the scale's not going to drop drastically, but it is going to, you know, um, it is going to move. It's just going to take a little bit of time. So just to kind of wrap up, um, if you are considering doing the keto diet, Please know that it is temporary and a lot of people try to think of it as like a jump start, but you need to then have a backup plan because anything you do temporarily will only produce temporary results. So if you're going to start on that because you want to kind of be able to, sometimes it's easier to have that all or nothing like, you know, sugars on limits or sugars off limits, that's fine. Whatever you need to do to get started, if it's going to motivate you to lose weight and you are someone who is very much overweight and sometimes the benefits of weight loss to regardless of how you do it initially losing five to five to ten percent of your initial body weight it can be enough to get off some high blood pressure medications um some cholesterol medications some diabetes medications so in the beginning if you're someone who is very is overweight kind of on that bmi scale in the obesity range then this actually might be something initially that you might want to consider but you definitely want to have a backup plan you want to make sure that you're working with a nutrition professional one-on-one um to help guide you and also to help you with the foundational stuff of our behaviors and our mindset Um, and our emotions around food because whatever diet you do whether it be keto or vegan or paleo gluten-free whatever it is we still have this relationship with food that we need to heal we need to make sure it's healthy all right that is it for me today if you have any further questions if you want guidance if you've been considering doing keto if you've done it in the past um you have questions ask me follow me on instagram at tips underscore with underscore tony or the tips with tony podcast send me an email tips with tony at gmail.com if you want further information about working with me one-on-one maybe you've done this and it didn't work for you and you want to find the balance in your eating habits go to www.tipswithtony.com slash coaching and I would be happy to help you kind of uncover what it is that keeps getting in your way why you're not able to be consistent 
And whether it be the relationship and the emotions that you have tied to food or whether it be physically like what you're actually eating that's making this really challenging for you um, to lose weight and keep it off, please um, don't hesitate. Reach out to me or go and apply to my program. All right, guys, it's been a pleasure chatting with you. If you're not already subscribed to the Tips with Tony podcast, please subscribe. It allows other people to find it. A new episode comes out every Monday and every Wednesday. As always, I'm Tony Marinucci, your registered dietitian, helping you get healthy one bite at a time.